This is Eurogamer Expo 2011. So it's been a busy morning. Um, the queue is enormously large, much larger than it was last year. And um, once we got in, I was like, what am I going to do? Go straight to the indie area. Go straight to the indie area. And then I went straight to the indie area, and I found there was lots of people there. And I thought, oh, there are lots of people here. Maybe I should get my camera out quickly and just start taking pictures. People playing games. And then I got my camera out, and then I broke it. And then I was sad. And then I realized it was time to go see Tim Willits in the ID presentation. So I went to see Tim Willits in the ID presentation and they said, don't take any film. I thought that's good because my camera's broken. So um, it's been a good morning all around. I did manage to play a couple of things so far. Mole Cat Twist and also, what was the other one? Oh yeah, Really Big Sky, which I did enjoy after getting used to its controls. Going back to Mole Cat Twist, I had a few issues with that. It just didn't seem to be, I had to wait a long time for these little uh, mole cats to run around, which are basically lemmings, and you control them by rotating pieces of the puzzle. A lot of little trial and error to Mole Cat Twist. Couldn't quite pick it up really quickly. And I'm going to keep on eating now, and I'm not sure if I've got a presentation to go to in a few minutes time. Well, you know, don't mind me, I'm just going to eat some, some salad. Don't, don't think about cake. Go away. Okay, so it's what well, just after five now, and well, it's been quite busy. Uh, I had a look at um, a few of the games in the indie selection. There was, I did look at quick look at Xenonauts. Um, I didn't play the game because I have no experience of XCOM really. Uh, I didn't really trust myself with it. So I just let the guy talk to me a bit. It was Chris England. Uh, he was a, a helpful guy. He told me all about the game and showed me a bit what was going on. Now the thing with um, Xenonauts is I think that it sounds like they've had a lot of people uh, flocked to them after XCOM turned out to be um, close to an FPS. So um, I'm Hoping it's going to be successful because the original XCOM it's a bit, a bit of a trial for me to you know get used to all the clicking around with the, the mouse rather than you know directing things with a, with a cursor. Um, that's of course my failing, of course. Um, what else did I look at? Ah, oh, how to go waves. I really enjoyed waves. I played the beta when it came out in Rock Paper Shock and some months back, and the this version was pretty good. Um, uh, it, it's a totally different to score, guys, which essentially is going up against this competition there. I don't think Rob, who the developer, really likes the idea of competing with, with Charlie. He doesn't really want to. He doesn't really want to beat Charlie. Um, but uh, it's sort of like they're eating into each other's sails at the time. So uh, fingers crossed for for that. I'm definitely going to buy it because I just love arena shooters when they do come together like that. Uh, what else did I see? Um, I did have a little bit of Smuggle Truck as well, Smuggle Truck, uh, which is, it is an odd little game. I don't think it's the kind of game I really want to play more than about 10 minutes. But the, the issue with uh, Smuggle Truck is it's an odd juxtaposition of almost Sonic-like music. It reminded me of Sonic when I was playing it, yet I'm trying to carry all these immigrants and um, there's a lot of weird humour in the game. It, it is kind of effective in its own way. Um, so I could kind of recommend that for a quick play. Um, I also went to the Prey 2, uh, the Prey 2 bit, and uh, Prey 2 developer session, and I really enjoyed that. I feel bad for saying that because I'm not the kind of I'm the kind of person who's anti getting into all these sort of like um, you know getting getting into the the spirit of a trailer or, or a playthrough. It's been designed so you respond to it, but man, I did enjoy it, and I feel a bit I feel a bit dirty. I feel a bit dirty about that. I'm sorry. Um, but possibly Prey 2 may be a purchase for me, even though I'm not purchasing games. I'm not purchasing games, no. No. Um, so, uh, Prey 2 was great because of the fluidity of the motion. It was just exciting to watch, and it just felt like if it's that exciting to play, I mean, it looked special. I did get a bit of a Cloverfield uh, sickness when I was watching it, though. Uh, like the Rage one this morning. Rage, 
it was, it was a 30 years of ID, id, and I thought it didn't really turn me on so much, but I mean it was pretty, it was pretty, um, but that's probably not enough for a game. But I hear that people who played Rage says it's pretty good, so who knows. Also spent some time in the retro area, and there's all sorts of you know Atari 2600, Commodore 64, all those sort of old machines, and I wasn't really bothered. You know, I've spent the last three months doing all that stuff myself, so I really wasn't interested in doing it all over again. But I was very, very excited about the um, the kind of arcade cabinets which uh, this company Bespoke Cabinets made, and. I felt like they said to do would, would I like one because they, they it's a company that sells them for home use. Um, I can't remember if it was 400, 500 pounds or something for the small one. Uh, I mean, there's a certain retro cachet in them, and they're certainly exciting. I mean, they're, they're, they're newly built, but they have a feel of being like um, you know the, the, the old stuff from like the 80s or whatever. Maybe one day, maybe one day I'll get one myself. At the moment, well, not with two children running around the house, you know, one year old, three year old. It's not going to be compatible, but I really wanted to play one. I, I talked to the guy who was, uh, you know, talking about their business, it's been going for about six, seven years. Um, so I think uh, I want to return to them sometime in the future. Okay, I imagine I look pretty scary right now with the light reflecting off my eyes. Um, I've just been playing the last the last few games in the Indie Games Arcade. I haven't got time to go all through all of them. I don't think I'm going to play Ter Terry Cavanaugh's game uh, at a distance, which requires two-player co-op. Um, so there, I did play first of all Pineapple Smash Crew, I think it was, which is just like a kind of like an old-school shooter. It's kind of fun. But I don't feel like I was compelled to buy it. It's kind of like an old shooter which has done really well. Um, what else do we have? Uh, they moved on to Swing Swing Subs, Blocks That Matter. I did kind of like that, um, but I'm not sure, I'm not convinced I really want to want to, want to buy that or not. It's a weird mash of, uh, mashup of Boulder Dash, Tetris and Minecraft where you dig out the blocks and then you get to play somewhere you want. But you can only put them down in Tetris shapes. And some of the blocks have different properties. Like the sponges just fall while the stone stays there. And uh, there's a lot of... You can see the colour puzzles are going to come out of it. So there is a bit of... It's a strange a strange thing, but there's a lot of controls. Like you've got to drill and then you've got to, you can jump. And then you need special keys to go into like block placing mode. So I wasn't sure how easy it would find an audience. But it's on beyond XBlig for quite some time. Um, I finally ended up with Photonica, which I played on Indie Games from Indie Games some time ago. It was uh, a very small, easy free running game back then, and I didn't see, I thought it was alright, but I didn't see much in it. And now, of course, uh, they're going, it's a bigger version, a better version, and I, I didn't really understand what could be so important about it, uh, what could be so interesting about it. But it turns out Photonica is uh, quite astonishing. Um, I was very surprised at how it felt. It's just a free-running game, a bit like a Cannonball, but in 3D. Uh, you hold down a space to run and let go to jump. Somehow it just, just really works. It's a bit like the flow, state of flow you get from a game like, um, you know, uh, an arena shooter, uh, a bullet hell shooter, um, or, you know, an FPS when you're really in the zone, you're, you're firing and shooting like several enemies in, a go, in one go. We just have to concentrate so hard. It's like that, but you get that state of flow, but without the adrenaline. And it's just a really relaxing, hypnotic kind of experience, which I was surprised. Uh, even here, in all this noise, it actually worked. So, uh, I recommend it. It's, it's um, pay, for, pay what you want over on their website. Um, and I hope uh, they do get a bit more money out of it and see what else they can create. Right, I've only got about 20 minutes left before they shut this place down. I don't think they'll lock me in here with Terry Cavanaugh's game. I wouldn't be good anyway because I need another player. Then I could trap someone else in here. OK, 
Okay, so I played these robotic hearts of mine in the end. It was the last thing I did. It was alright. Puzzle game. Not too much to it. Don't think I really enjoyed it. Anyway, let's find these drinks. Welcome to Eurogame Expo 2011. Shit. We did this before, didn't we? This is, uh, I've forgotten already. Matt, Matt, that's right, that's, that's uh, Martin. Yeah. Uh, Tom, uh, Lewis, doesn't look anything like his avatar. And what the, where did the other guy go? <laughs> okay, that's great. <laughs> okay, hey Greg, you're ready for this, right? We've done for my hat. Let's go and get a hat. Your Skype hat? Yes. I don't know, is that going to make any difference to the... Let's just do it. Yeah. Skype, ready? <laughs> oh. <laughs>